Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial and we're going to be talking about shading with uh, the color picker um, and this one uh, we're going to be using a um, texture brush because um, although it's easier to shade with an airbrush with a soft airbrush the problem is um, it gives the um, the object a very rubbery feeling a very plastic feeling from my point of view so um, that's not always um, something I'm um, I like because there are something objects like skin or different materials and that have a texture to them. So I'm taking a um, a textured brush and I'm increasing the size just to fit my um, my purpose here. You can see this one looks something like this this is what the markings left by this uh, by this brush gonna undo that and again just like uh, in the last tutorial we're gonna be using uh, two different types of uh, illustration and I'm gonna be using the one without the outline first and adding a uh, clipping mask over it and what I'm going to do is take a a um, darker tone and the opacity is still set to uh, toggle well, with the base about around the, the base is 26 I use some um, uh, ranges from 20 to 30 percent and I'm gonna I'm also going to uh, toggle on the, um, the size for this one so again it's the same process you just go and add the color you can see now it's not as as smooth as the color picker so after adding this uh, base one you're gonna use the color picker we're adding here the 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 high the, the shades sorry the shading and the problem is it's not consistent is not as consistent as it would be with an uh, airbrush so I'm gonna do is take the base color again uh, the color picker on PC is uh, alt and click on the, the color and I'm gonna go over this to just to smoothen it out here now I'm gonna pick another intermediate color here and just smooth just smoothen it out here and another color here and you can go to this process as many times as uh, as necessary just uh, until you get the um, the results you're looking over so what what's happening here is that co colors are uh, overlaying each other with um, well with different uh, opacities and it's giving it a um, a gradient effect again as I said this will not be a very smooth gradient seeing how uh, the passes are inconsistent because you already have uh, opacity uh, um, toggled on and size toggled on as well and yeah that's the neighbor's dog barking like crazy so what I'm gonna do is just take some black and just by applying very little pressure I'm gonna add some more dark lines here which I'm gonna shade I'm gonna just integrate again with the color picker technique just go with some more light lighter uh, color over it and then when with some darker color over it and just redo the process as many times as necessary also don't be afraid to undo when working digitally undo is your best best friend okay now for the highlights the process is the same just take a lighter um, shade of the color and just go in 
then go back to the base color just to make uh, create a smoother um, passage, you know, the gradient. This is more like like painting than um, than illustrating because you're gonna go in countless times over it and just overlay shade after shade after shade. Now going in with the um, with the white for the um, for the highlights. Okay, you can see now. It's starting to look like a ball, but it's rather rough. So you have to smooth in the edges. And don't be afraid to do this as many times as necessary. Okay, now for the um, rim light and shadows. So I'm gonna be taking a very dark black and just go in around the edges. Depending on what type of illustration, you can smooth out these edges um, further or you just can leave them like that. I'm going to smooth them up a little bit using the next uh, shade to it by using the color picker you just pick and start shading away and blending the colors and now for the highlights going in with pure white okay again the light is coming from the top left corner from here and just blending in the colors here So what I do for 100% for saturation is just take the white, I'm talking about highlights and shadows here, just take the whites, get a really small brush and just go over the, the rim of the object. Again, do this as many times as necessary. And remember, rim lighting is not softly shaded into the, the object, it's something hard. Okay, so this would be the end result. From here to here. From here to here. Notice it's not as smooth as the um, as the airbrush, but um, you can get it there if you put enough work into it. You can get it very very smooth. But plus, it has some texture. It has something uh, more um, painterly to it. It's not. It's not plastic, it's not rubbery. Okay, moving on to the next, uh, to the outline part again. Outline type of illustration, and I'm again, I'm having colors on uh, one layer and the line work on the um, upper layer. So I'm adding a cleavage mask on the color layer, and the technique is the same. There's no, there's no difference. The thing is, with um, as I said before, with the comic style, old school, new school illustration, the shading tends to be a little bit more um, abrupt, more um, hard. So there's no need in uh, going on, going with multiple colors, colors, uh, variation tones. I'm just going to go in with a black with a large brush because, just like before, this will be saturated this will be very very dark you see I'm going in with this one and, and choosing the a middle tone like this just to feather it in and then going with the base color I'm picking the base color again and I'm going in like this okay I'm going back to true black again and I'm just 
saturating a little more on this part here and choosing a, a dark tone but somewhere in the middle just to feather it in a little more and as you can see here the black of the line work is not the same as here so if you want to give the, the piece some consistency just take a smaller brush fill it with black and just go over the rim over the, the line work like this until there's no difference here So by doing this, you're going to be blending in the line work with the, um, the shading of uh, the object, which gives uh, everything a even more um, comic -y feel. Okay, now moving on to the, um, the highlights, I'm taking the base color again, going in with a very light tone, with a very big brush. I'm feeling that this is the general pa um, shape of the highlight like this. So after I've added the um, saturation I'm, I'm looking for, I'm just going to take the base color again and just shade it in, feather it in just to, to make the, the gradient smoother. Again, this is up to you how much work you want to put into it and um, how smooth you want the gradient to be you can just or maybe just the way it comes out of the brush is not the way to go but you don't have to overwork it especially if you're uh, if you're drawing a uh, a comic which is has I don't know four or five six panels on a uh, on a single page and they're gonna be small and everything there's no need to to overdo it with the with the blending Okay, and this is this looks nice, and I'm going in with the white now with a smaller brush over the same general area. And again, going in and feathering it in. As I said, this is going to take multiple passes just to get the feeling and the difference between um, the airbrush technique and this one is that while we're when working with uh, an airbrush you're gonna um, you're gonna be doing long uh, swoops over the over the entire um, thing for the for this one you're gonna work with very small more like dabs and just press very light very lightly onto onto it just dabbing and dabbing just like you would be painting and dabbing okay now onto the rim lighting take a small brush And just add the white, add the white until you're happy with the saturation. For this one, I'm pressing a little bit, a bit harder because I don't, I want it to be quite white. Now I'm going in with the base color again, and I'm um, picking colors from time to time just to. remove some of the white paint over it actually so let's look at the difference so you have the object without the shading and the object with the shading and now you have the two objects see depending on what, which type of illustration you're going for 
you can always use this one I prefer this one because it also gives some texture to the to the piece in comparison to the airbrush the airbrush is great for uh, smoother textures like uh, freshly cut metal like uh, and polished metal it's great for uh, rubber for plastic for um, glass but if you're working with uh, something that has some texture like leaves or um, petals or um, of skin of any kind you sh I prefer prefer to work with the texture brushed whatever that may be okay so thank you for watching and remember to like and subscribe